Uh, thanks, Minister. This is clearly the biggest job, uh, the biggest commitment that we have at the moment. It's the most important commitment for Victoria Police, and that is enforcing the Chief Health Officer guidelines. I just want to recap really briefly on what we're already doing because we have a significant commitment. We have Operation Sentinel, which is every day 500 police officers out and about uh, tasking, checking populous places, knocking on doors, a whole range of things. We have Operation Sentinel 2, which is the vehicle checkpoints, eight vehicle checkpoints right around the restricted area, those permanent ones where we're checking the access and egress right throughout the state. We have Operation Shielding, 160 transit police officers, uh, transit uh, protective services officers, I should say, and 80 um, police officers from transit who are out there every day and they're making sure that there's public assurance, they're checking um, who should be in proper areas and they're enforcing as you would expect them to be doing so. In addition to that, we have Operation Ribbon as well, which is our family violence operation. So there's a whole range of different areas, including Operation Soteria, where we're helping enforcement at quarantine hotels. All up, we're seeing every day upwards of around 1,500 police and PSOs out there enforcing as they should be. I've committed an extra 250 police and PSOs now to that already significant number, and on a daily basis, they will be enforcing throughout the day, but importantly, of a night time as well. We will have now, because of the curfew, we'll have significant uh, police and PSOs out there, not just in vehicles and doing um, if you like, static checks, but we'll have vehicle checkpoints where we'll set them up at random places and keep rolling them around Melbourne. So the potential, the opportunity for someone to be detected who isn't supposed to be out and about is significant. Every police officer right throughout our organisation in any patrol car has a responsibility for COVID-19 enforcement, and that's what they'll be doing. Every one of them will be making sure that we're enforcing these new guidelines, these restricted guidelines. The curfew is obviously significant because we expect to see much reduced movement right around the state. In terms of discretion, which is a word we've heard a lot, we did give them a period of discretion there when we moved to masks and other restrictions. That period of discretion is, you know, I've said it before, it's virtually closed. Of course, we can't be prescriptive for every circumstance, but it will only be in an exceptional circumstance, in an exceptional circumstance, that Victoria Police will be using discretion because we just have to stop this movement. We have to enforce the CHO guidelines. The vast majority of people are doing the right thing, and for those who are, I thank you, but there is still a, a minority who aren't. We've um, given out a significant range of infringements, as the Minister has outlined, 161 last night. 60 of those were for mask, um, for not wearing masks. And from our perspective, though, the people, the vast majority who are doing the right thing need to understand for those who aren't, there is a consequence. And there are consequences, and I want to be really clear on that. In the last week, we've seen a trend, an emergence, if you like, of groups of people, small groups, but nonetheless concerning groups who classify themselves as so sovereign citizens, whatever that might mean, uh, people who don't think the law applies to them. We've seen them at checkpoints, baiting police, um, not providing their name and address. On at least three or four occasions in the past week, we've had to smash the windows of people in cars and pull them out of there so they could provide their details because they weren't telling us where they were going. They weren't adhering to the Chief Health Officer guidelines. They weren't providing their name and their address. We don't want to be doing that, but people have to absolutely understand there are consequences for your actions, and if you're not doing the right thing, we will not hesitate to issue infringements, to arrest you, to detain you where it's appropriate. As I say, it's not something we want to be doing, but it is what we will do, and it has been occurring in the last week. And particularly one incident, if I like to highlight the type of challenges uh, that, um, that we're experiencing. Last night, a 26-year-old policewoman was on patrol with another partner uh, down in the Frankston area near the Bayside Shopping Centre. During that time, they approached a 38-year-old woman who wasn't wearing a mask. After a confrontation and being assaulted by that woman, those police officers went to ground and there was a scuffle. And during that scuffle, this 38-year-old woman um, hit the head, smashed the head of the policewoman several times into a concrete area on the ground. That behaviour 
is just totally unacceptable. That's someone who thinks they're above the law, they're not wearing a mask, they're approached and they're asked their reason why not, and then to react like that is just completely over the top. It's this type of irresponsible behaviour that we're going to address. That woman was taken back to the police station, she was charged with significant offences and bailed due to no criminal history. But nonetheless, it just goes to show how these things escalate from non-adherence to the smallest things. The message is clear from me, and it's simple. We want you to stay at home. That's what the Chief Health Officer wants you to do. We expect you to adhere, you to, adhere to the Chief Health Officer guidelines. If you don't, we will be enforcing those. We will issue infringements. We will arrest you. We will detain you where we have to. We now have significant new, um, if you like, infringement, um, not powers, but in, in penalties in the infringements. And for those who are not at home when they should be, when they should be self-isolating, when they should be quarantining, and we conduct those checks, we'll issue those infringements. And on that second occasion, you may well get a $5,000 infringement. They're significant penalties. And so the expectation is the consequences are there for you and you must adhere. Um, having said that, the minister has outlined briefly a number of, uh, if you like, breaches that occurred last night, and they continue to occur. Over the weekend, we saw Airbnb parties. Clearly, that's not acceptable. We saw people last night, someone who was driving to a bottle shop at three in the morning to get alcohol. That's not acceptable. We saw people going to McDonald's, coming back from McDonald's after getting some burgers. That is not acceptable. There are consequences. We will enforce them and the window of discretion is virtually closed. We're going to take any questions you have. Premier, of the 800 people that were found not be at home, how many of them have been referred to Victoria Police? Uh, all of those matters will be referred to police, and then it's a process of Victoria Police painstakingly working through each of those. Uh, and uh, to the extent that we can over time, if we can provide you with updates on uh, what the consequences of that further police work is, then we're, we're more than happy to do that. I'm Correct. And more than 100 have been referred to Victoria Police. Yes. Do we have an update on how many have been fined? Well, I asked the Chief Commissioner exactly that question just a little while ago. We don't have an update today, but as soon as we can provide you with any further information about what's happened, we will. Uh, but everyone should know and understand if the ADF knock on your door and anyone who's isolating, you will get multiple random door knocks, uh, both close contacts as well as positive cases, to support you, to uh, provide you with information and to make sure that you're doing the right thing. Uh, anyone not found to be where they should be, that matter will be referred to Victoria Police. And despite the scale of the challenge, despite the numbers, Victoria Police will get to each and every one of those people. Uh, and uh, from today, no exercise. So there's literally, apart from getting emergency medical care, so going to the emergency department, uh, most likely in an, in an ambulance, Apart from emergency medical care, there is literally no reason for you to leave your home. Uh, and if you were to leave your home and not be found there, you will have a very difficult time convincing Victoria Police that you had a lawful reason. You've just got to stay home. If you need anything, then we'll provide you with support. We'll do everything we possibly can to support you. And I do, I do make the point, again, that the vast majority of Victorians, regardless of their virus status, regardless of where they live, their, their what they do for a living, their income level, uh, all of those things, regardless of all those things, the vast majority of people are doing the right thing. And, and we are very grateful to each and every one of you. Uh, but this is now in a different phase. And we are going to step up this work. Uh, these penalties, no, there's no joy in crafting these penalties, uh, but I think they're appropriate. Premier, I'm I'm sorry, sorry. Sorry. Are there any specific 